We're going to move on to the rare cards now. Uh, our first one of those is Bone Drake. Uh, this is a 6-5 neutral dragon for 6 with a death rattle that adds a random dragon into your hand. So this is basically a Boulder Fist Ogre trading away 2 health in exchange for draw a random dragon card. That's actually pretty good, especially considering that this itself is a dragon. This card would not be nearly as good if it weren't also a dragon, but because it is itself a dragon, it means that it can survive dragon fire potion, it can activate dragon and operative and do stuff like that. And because it's a six cost dragon, it only competes with bookworm. Now that being said, it is a little hard to play four six drops in dragon priest. So you probably won't see this as a two of, but you will likely see this appear in dragon priest and any other dragon oriented deck uh, that comes into the meta. This is a four star card. I think you're definitely going to see it played. I think it's going to have a big impact. The value of a random dragon is always very late game slanted because almost all the dragons are large, heavily costed minions. And there are going to be plenty of games where you play this, it gets traded into, you kill an opponent's guy, you get Ysera, and you ride that out of the game. Next up, Corpse Razor. Uh, this is a 3-3 for 5. With Battle Cry, give a friendly minion, Death Rattle, resummon this minion. Uh, so this is the Blizzard tradition of taking a vanilla statted minion, taking it down one stat, and then adding a spell effect onto it, right? This is Ancestral Spirit, two mana shaman spell, exact same effect, and a 3-3 three, three for 3. Um, neither of those things is good enough, so putting them both together, while it is slightly better, is still not good enough. Uh, I'm going to give this two stars. There's a tiny potential that if something like the, the crazy Spirit Echo resurrect -y deck uh, becomes popular, or if Resurrect Priest really just goes off the chain and obsidian statue is just that good that maybe those decks could play this guy but otherwise i really don't think he's got what it takes okay this this is my favorite this is happy ghoul he's really happy and look at him with, with his little his you know ratty little ponytail and i'm actually cannot really tell whether his body parts are, are completely attached to each other but he's really happy and he's happy because if you heal yourself he is a zero mana three three and even if you can't heal yourself for some reason he's still a three mana three three uh, I'm going to give this card four stars. I think it's great. I think Priest and Paladin specifically are going to get a ton of use out of this guy. I think you're going to see a lot of situations where Priest, you know, takes one or two damage from Pirate Warrior on on turn one and then goes turn two hero power emote. Oh, but wait, I also get a zero mana three, three. What up? Uh, there'll be situations where Paladin swings the true silver champion into a three attack minion, you know, and is able to to clear the minion and then uh, get the free happy ghoul. You do have to be damaged before. Before you swing it just so you know you can't heal yourself when you're at full you have to actually be damaged to be healed and be able to play happy ghoul but being able to have one damage on you is not a terribly difficult feat in priest or paladin so yeah this is a four star card zero mana three three that's sick it's amazing I'm also going to give uh, Happy Ghoul my Silver Design Star. It is another card where you look at it and you immediately go like, wow, how can I just go totally fucking nuts with this right now? Oh, what do I heal? How do I curve into it? What can I do with two free three threes on turn two? Uh, and that's cool. It's exciting. It makes you smile, much like Happy Ghoul is smiling. Um, it's great design. Really like it. Props on that. Thumbs up. Okay, Keening Banshee. Uh, whenever you play a card, remove the top three cards of your deck. It's a four mana five five. I want to love this card. I want to look at it and say, oh, it's it's kind of like Fell Reaver, except I have control over it. But I'm just not confident that one extra attack over a Yeti is worth it because in any deck where you would want that over statting in any deck where you're willing to play that kind of suicide style, you really don't want to lose the ability to play cards. Like obviously you can play a few cards after this, but once you've played four or five cards, you're really seriously impacting the possibility of completely running out of gas against the mid-range or a control deck. Against other aggro decks, yeah, it's great because you're going to have a 5-5. Five five. They're going to have to either respect it and trade into it, in which case, cool, you got extra value, or they're going to have to disrespect it and go for your face, in which case, whatever, you play a few more. The deck's, the deck's not going to be depleted before your match with this enemy aggro deck is over. Um, so unfortunately, I have to give this card two stars. It hypothetically could appear if aggro becomes really dominant and five attack is kind of a flashpoint. Uh, but otherwise, I just... Because it is not overstated enough, I don't think it's good enough. 
Uh, we've got Mindbreaker. This is a 2-5 for 3, not a great stat line, uh, but his effect is that hero powers are disabled, uh, straight up. Unfortunately, this also affects yours, although that's mitigated by the fact that you can hero power and then Mindbreaker. Uh, unfortunately, the fact of the matter as well is that this isn't really that big of a deal. He's just a 2-5. He's not great, you know. It's technically the same number of stats as a 3-4, but a vanilla 2-5 is not really going to cut it, and in a lot of cases, this is just going to be a vanilla 2 to five. If you play it on curve, they're just going to play minions and spells. They're not going to worry about playing their hero power. If they needed to hero power on turn four after you play this guy, they were already in a bad situation and you didn't really do that much to them. If you draw this guy in the late game and you try to win a value game with him, he's just a two five. He's just going to get spelled down or traded into by some other minion. So while the effect is hypothetically really good, I feel like because it's an aura and it's not a battle cry, this card is only two stars. If this was battle cry, hero powers are disabled for one turn or whatever then it would be a significantly better card. But because it's an aura, if it just gets bounced into by a minion or whatever, it's gone, eh, two stars. Okay, we've got Phantom Freebooter. This is a 3-3 for four. It is a pirate, and it has a battle cry of gain stats equal to your weapons, which is to say the weapon's attack gets added to its attack, the weapon's durability gets added to its health. Um, so it's basically a super-powered um, South Sea Raider. Um, South Sea Raider obviously being a 2-3 for two. This is a 3-3 for four, but it also gains health. I don't think it compares to South Sea because it's slow. The only deck that's ever going to play this is Pirate Warrior. Pirate Warrior already has Corcoran Elite and Mortal Strike in that four slot. I don't think you're going to see Phantom Freebooter take away any slots. Maybe it could take out South Sea Captain slot. Maybe it could even take out Bitter Tide Hydra slot because if you play, for example, turn two Fiery War Axe, turn three Blood Sail Cultist, turn four Phantom Freebooter, and you get like a seven five for four, that's almost as good as a Bitter Tide for one mana left but I just I feel like it's too circumstantial there will be times where it's a 3-3 for 4 and Pirate Warrior and it's just garbage so unfortunately I gotta give it 2 stars Serenite Chain Gang it is a 2-3 for 4 with Taunt that has a battle cry, summon a copy of this minion. Technically, it's a hand buff card, and hand buff doesn't get any play, but if it did, this card would be amazing with any hand buff effect. It's basically Feral Spirit, but without overload. So Feral Spirit gives you two two threes for 3 with overload 2. This gives you two two threes for four with no overload, and it's neutral. I think you're going to see lots of this card. Taunt Warrior will play this card. Uh, Priest will play this card. Paladin might even play this card. Druid might play this card. Shaman might play this card. There are all sorts of decks that might play this card. There is no deck I can think of, however, that I immediately say this will play this card. Uh, so as a result, I'm going to have to give it only three stars. Um, I think it's a four star card in terms of power level, but because I don't see where it smoothly fits into any meta deck, I have to give it three stars uh, according to our rating scheme schema at least. Next card is Shallow Gravedigger. It's a 3-1 for 3, very popular stat line these days, with a death rattle of add a random death rattle minion to your hand. Um, so it's very similar to draw a card, only slightly worse but slightly better in some cases. Uh, I think this is a three star card. If any deck with a strong death rattle synergy focus comes into play, if uh, if this imaginary you know death rattle rogue or Cthulhu paladin or Cthulhu priest become popular again, I think you might see shallow gravedigger make it in there. I'm not confident about that because it doesn't have that much power, but it is fairly reliable in that it does draw you another card. So we're gonna give it three stars, a uh, hopeful three stars, and we're gonna see if I'm correct that it shows up in in. in is off decks. I said Cthulhu, didn't I? Uh, next up, we have Ticking Abomination. A 5 6 for 4 with Death Rattle, deal 5 damage to your minions. Um, much like Keating Banshee, I just think it's not overstated enough. It's more overstated than Keating Banshee by one stat. It's a 5-6 instead of a 5-5, five five, so it's two stats above a Yeti. Hypothetically, you could play it in Zoo or an Egg Druid if that was a real thing, and you could pop your Devil Sore eggs when it dies and get a 5-5 five five out of it, and then that's really cool. But the problem is I think there are going to be too many circumstances where you just draw this with a strong board, and it's effectively a dead draw because you can't risk playing it because it turns the Mage's Fireball into a Flame Strike, and you can't allow that to happen when you're playing a deck that wants an overstated four cost minion. Uh, I'm going to give it two stars because it does have that hypothetical synergy with Egg Druid or Zoo or some other, you know, deck that wants to kill its own minions to get tons of value. But I just, again, like with Keening Banshee, I don't think it's overstated enough. It's not unfair enough to have the drawback that it has, and therefore it's not really going to see any play. Moving now into our neutral epics, we have Corpse Taker. Corpse Taker is a four mana three, three, 
With Battlecry, gain Taunt if your deck has a Taunt minion, and then repeat the same for Divine Shield, Lifesteal, and Wind Fury. So hypothetically, you could get a 4-mana, 3-3, three, three, Wind Fury, Divine Shield, Taunt, Lifesteal creature. Not terribly likely. What is terribly likely, however, is that you play this in a deck like Paladin that runs Wicker Flame, Burn Bristle, or other Divine Shield minions, and you could feasibly, somewhat reliably, have this as a neutral 4-mana, 3-3, three, three, Taunt Lifesteal, Divine Shield minion, and that is not bad. You know, Wicker Flame, Burn Bristle is a legendary class card that is a 3-mana, 2-2, two, two, Divine Shield, Taunt Lifesteal. So plus one mana, plus two stats, and make it neutral? Hell yeah, sign me up. It's a four-star card. I think there's going to be at least one deck that has the right combination of minions that it can reliably proc two to three of these, and that's going to make it good enough. You've got cards like uh, Alakir the Windlord. You've got cards like Wicker Flame Burn Bristle. You've got cards like Tyrion Forgering that exist and are played in the meta somewhat widely. As a result, I think Corpse Taker will get played as well. Uh, this also gets a Silver Design Star because it is a cool complicated card that is easy to understand because it uses parallelism and repetition of a mechanic that makes you understand what it does more easily than you would think for the kind of complexity that it shows. It also adds a ton of complexity to deck building because you not only need to consider, you know, how many cards and abilities do I have in my deck that can trigger Corpse Taker, then you have to consider, well, what's my density of each ability? How much am I willing to trade away to make my Corpse Taker get her full set of abilities reliably? It creates very interesting deck building challenges that are rewarding because a fully buffed corpse taker is a hella strong minion right it can get you six health and kill a bunch of guys and taunt a bunch of guys and do a bunch of really cool stuff so it absolutely deserves that silver design star. Next epic is Death Axe Punisher. First of all, a really metal name that is unfortunately associated with a really shitty card. Uh, this is a four mana, three, three that has battle cry. Give a random lifesteal minion in your hand, plus two, plus two. Unless lifesteal minions are really, really strong, a lot of the times this is going to be a four mana, three, three. Even when it's not a four mana, three, three, it's a four mana, five, five that required you to play a lifesteal minion, which means it'll still sometimes be a four mana, three, three. It's really not going to be good enough to get a deck slot in any deck. Uh, it's a one star card. It's got synergy with something that isn't guaranteed to show up and it's not good enough on its own when it can't trigger the synergy. So uh, it's just not going to see any play. OK, Drakari Enchanter. It's a three mana one five with your end of turn effects trigger twice. Very interesting, very cool effect with a ton of really serious potential. I mean, the obvious combination with this is with the, the neutral legendary, the Lich King, to get two of those super powerful Death Knight cards. But there are a ton of other cards with end of turn effects that could potentially be exploited very strongly by Drakari Enchanter. Uh, you've got things like the mage cards, Ethereal Arcanist, that gain plus two, plus two at the end of the turn. All of a sudden, boom, they're gaining plus four, plus four. That's a four mana seven, seven, baby. You've got things like Cabal Trafficker, which is already a decent card. If it draws you two cards, then it's a phenomenal card. It's also going to get my Silver Design Star because it opens a lot of potential in the future. It means that this card could show up anytime over the next year and the next two sets that come out and suddenly transform an otherwise mediocre card into a really good one, that there might be someday a critical mass of end of turn effects that are good enough that all of a sudden end of turn becomes an archetype and this card is kind of the linchpin in that. Uh, overall though, it is only a two star card right now. Despite it having so much potential and being cool, the body is very weak uh, and it doesn't do anything unless you have another creature with end of turn effects and not enough of those are around in most classes to make it worth doing. Next up, we have Furnace Fire Colossus. This is a six mana, six, six, uh, with a battle cry of discard all weapons from your hand and gain all of those stats onto this guy. Uh, so this is one of the ultimate Timmy cards to use an old Magic the Gathering phrase. This guy just gets really huge and he's so big and super strong. But the problem is you're trading around all your weapons and weapons are some of the best cards in Hearthstone and a general and specific sense. G weapons in general are good as weapons and weapons specific Specifically, as in the weapons we can play, the cards that are weapons individually are also generally pretty good. And fundamentally, without weapons, this guy is slightly weaker than a Boulder Fist Ogre. So even though he's really cool, I have to give him two stars because he's just not good enough. Hypothetically, you'll win some games with him. He's almost a one star card, but I'm going to give him the two because he's got a weird, unique effect and potential synergy uh, with uh, the Soul Forge Warrior card. But uh, you're probably not going to see him. We've got Meat Wagon. This is a four mana, one four with 
Death Rattle, summon a minion from your deck with less attack than this minion. Uh, it is a mech. This card is really bad for now, so it's not good enough because it doesn't have anything to find. It is a puzzle with a missing piece. Hypothetically, if a really, really strong zero mana minion or a really reliable attack buffing effect that actually got serious play were to be in the meta in a mid range deck, then Meat Wagon could go from a one to a four instantly. For now, it is, however, a one because really the only thing you could get with this is like a Doomsayer, which is cool, but for four mana, it's way too slow and they don't even have to kill it. I am, however, going to give this my silver design star um, because it opens up so many possibilities and it, it really could be broken if you could just find how to break it. And those to me are some of the best cards in a collectible card game. They 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 scream out for exploitation uh, and the greatest minds have to really put a lot of work into it and tinker with it to make it work. And sometimes they find out it doesn't. It, it, it's kind of like the gold rush, right? It's the gold rush of tech. This card is crap, but what if it wasn't crap? And to me, a card that makes you think that is among the best design cards uh, in a card game. Nerubian Unraveler is a 5-5 five, five for 6 with a passive effect of spells cost 2 more. That's for you and your opponent. Uh, this card wishes it was Lotheb so badly. It really wants to be like Daddy Lotheb. And it's not. It costs one more mana for the same size body. The effect affects you and your opponent. Yes, it technically lasts for multiple turns, but it's also an aura and not a battle cry, which means if they trade a 5-5 five, five into it, it's just gone. If they fireball it, oh no, I had to pay six mana instead of four. Now this card is just completely gone and you played a six mana 5-5 five, five, and I beat you up with my minions. That's a recurring theme with cards like this, by the way. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to give this two stars, even though I think it's a cool effect. Uh, counter control effects like that are cool, but Lotheb did it best. Lotheb should just come back. This card is not going to slot in for Lotheb. It has too many flaws. Uh, compared to a battle cry version of the same card. Here we have Rattling Rascal. Uh, this is a four mana 2-2 two -two with a battle cry, summon a 5-5 five -five skeleton, and a death rattle, summon one for your opponent. This, my friends, is a four mana 7-7, seven -seven, and it's hard to go wrong with a four mana 7-7, seven -seven, except when it's actually a four mana 2-2 two -two because the other guy gets a 5-5. Five -five. You get the 5-5 five -five up front. It means you can do some potentially exploitative things like this by silencing it, bouncing it, evolving it, even donating it with treachery, but it's really just not good enough as a standalone card. Uh, giving your opponent a 5-5 five -five is no way equivalent to Overload 2. Overload 2 is so much less punishing than giving your opponent a 5-5, five -five. and as a result, this is a two-star card. Um, it might get some play in Evolve Shaman, hypothetically. Um, five drops aren't the most amazingest thing in the whole world to evolve into, but they can then go to six drops, especially with uh, the Shaman Death Knight. But I just don't think it's reliable enough. And like a lot of, a lot of cards in the expansion, it's super cool when it works and it's kind of crap when it doesn't. So yeah, two stars. Next up, we have Skulking Geist. This is a six mana four six with a battle cry of destroy all one cost spells in both hands and decks. Wow. So this just totally fucking destroys Jade Idol and Jade Druid. Um, if you play this card, if you have this card in your deck and you play this, all their Jade Idols are gone. You don't automatically win, but it really takes out their in-game inevitability. As a result, you are absolutely going to see this as a one of in control decks that would normally get it outvalued by Jade Druid in the long game. So for that reason, it's a four star card. However, I'm going to do something that I didn't say I was going to do up front because I didn't think I was going to need it. And we're going to give this one a black star of design shame. This is one of the worst design cards in all of Hearthstone. Despite being good, it is a ham-fisted, opaque, clumsy, inelegant response to a problem that isn't even really a problem. This is a card that is just the most boring type of single-minded hate card that simply shuts down one archetype, and the archetype that it's targeting doesn't need to be completely neutered. It counters control, and that's fine. It's okay for a deck to exist, which counters one side of the spectrum of aggro versus control, because let's face it, Jay Druid's win rate isn't that high right now. Jay Druid isn't dominating the meta like everybody thought it would when Angoro came out. It's certainly not doing it now, and it's certainly not going to be doing it in Frozen Throne. So why print this card? Why just 
slam your fist into Jay Druid for really no reason whatsoever. I think this is a total misstep. I think this is a card that represents a fundamental flaw in the way that Team 5 handles designing sets and that they make decisions way too far out. I think they saw the community's concern that in our Ungoro's lead up phase, that Jade Idol was going to go out of control. They decided when they were developing Frozen Throne at that juncture that they were going to make this card because it was necessary. And frankly, it's not. I'm not going to I'm not going to shit on them too hard because everybody makes mistakes sometimes. But this is definitely a poorly designed card. And it kind of stands out in the set because it's actually one of the best design sets in Hearthstone so far. It makes me kind of sad to see. All right. Our last neutral epic is Tomb Lurker. Uh, it's a five mana five three with Battle Cry at a random death rattle minion that died this game to your hand. It has an upside and that it has Battle Cry draw a random but probably good card because cards that get played in the game are better than random cards but it's still a random card from the pool so you're not as likely to have that card have synergy with your deck the downside however is that the stat line is absolute garbage uh three health on a five mana minion is just not sustainable uh you're better off playing loot hoarder frankly uh because at least loot hoarder can appear and trade up into something advantageously this gets traded up into by two drops and even one drop sometimes depending on if they're playing buffs so as a result a two-star card uh there might be some cards that are super having the death rattles they might play this guy but he's just too fragile to be really like significantly good and finally we have our neutral legendaries there are five neutral legendaries uh in the frozen throne set and without further ado let's get to it our first one is the lich king's faithful pupper arfus uh, he is a 2-2 beast for four with death rattle add a random death knight card to your hand. The problem with this is that it's a 2-2 for four. It doesn't have a proactive effect. And while death knight cards are very powerful, it isn't guaranteed to give you a death knight card that is relevant. And it's certainly not guaranteed to give you a card that's going to help compensate for the loss of tempo that you get playing a 2-2 for four mana. Uh, the only deck that might play this would be mid range or control hunter because it's a beast. You could hypothetically play it on turn four, coin it into it on turn four, and then on turn four play a pound master or some sort of beastly synergy is the only thing that could potentially redeem this uh, i'm gonna give this two stars even though the card it gives you is really strong it's just really slow and it's going to really harm your board presence to, to include this in your deck next up we have prince keleseth he's a two two for two uh, battle cry if your deck has no two cost cards give all minions in your deck plus one plus one um, Keleseth is part of a cycle of princes, Keleseth, Taldoram, and Valinar. Uh, his brothers will be the next two we go into, so you'll see them in a second. Uh, and he is, and this might disappoint you, the best of the three. Uh, he's the only one who actually has an effect that might be worth not playing two drops. Uh, if you're playing like a mid-range deck such as Taunt Warrior, maybe you skip all your two cost cards in order to give everything plus one plus one. But the problem is that it's not two cost minions, it's not two drops, it's two cost cards. So whatever deck you play it in, you have to give up on all your two cost spells. That means no more execute. That means no more frostbolt. That means no more maelstrom portal. That means no defile. There are a lot of really good two cost spells in almost every class, and you don't want to lose those just for a plus one plus one deck buff effect. Mistcaller wasn't good. This isn't good. I'm giving it a two star instead of a one star uh, because I think there may exist a deck in which the plus one plus ones are valuable enough in a class that doesn't have the most amazing two drops and has a good mid-range strategy, but I just don't think that's real, and that's why I'm only giving it two stars. Next up, Prince Taldoram. He is a 3-3 three, three for three, uh, with a battle cry of, if your deck has no three cost cards, transform him into a 3-3 three, three copy of a minion. Uh, this card is unmitigated garbage. It is a poorly statted minion, does not have a good enough effect if you play it on curve, and your curve is fucked because you can't have any three cost cards other than him. So you're giving up very valuable, very powerful cards. You're giving up Ravaging Ghouls, you're giving up Shadow Word Death, you're giving up all sorts of really powerful three drop cards in any class you play this in, in exchange for an effect that is just a crappy version of Faceless Manipulator. If you want to copy someone and that's an important part of your strategy, play faceless manipulator then you can still play three drops he's just not good enough it hypothetically enables the old leroy combo in a weird way and that you can play leroy and then Taldoram and then do some stuff but like there's nothing to do anymore because we don't have power overwhelming this card is terrible one star 400 dust get that Final Prince, Prince Valinar. He's a 4-4 four, four for 4. If you got no 4 cost cards in your deck, then as a battle cry, he gets Lifesteal and Taunt. Yeah, just play Corpse Taker. 
It's only one one bigger than Corpse Taker. It can't get Wind Fury and it can't get Divine Shield. And you can't play four cost cards. You can't play True Silver Champion anymore. You can't play Priest of the Feast. You can't play any four cost card. You can't play Fireball. And this card's only one one better than Corpse Taker with less possible abilities. Get the hell out of here. One star. Get in my dust pile. This is garbage. Cool staff, though. And our final neutral card, the one and the only Lich King. He is an 8-8-4-8 eight, eight, eight with Taunt. And at the end of every turn, you add a random Death Knight card to your hand. This is the only five-star neutral card in this set. I'm going to give this guy five stars. He's the new Dr. Boom. He's going to be in every goddamn deck. You're going to see him all over the place. You're constantly going to get him drawing one good card, and you're going to scramble to remove him because an 8-8 eight, eight for 8 is actually not that easy to remove. You're going to have to keep a Hex or a Polymorph, which are actually not highly played cards in the meta right now anyway. You actually might see them come back entirely because the Lich King is such a powerful powerful card. All eight of the cards that he can bring up are actually very useful. We're going to go over all eight of them right now just very quickly. Uh, we've got Anti-Magic Shell. It's a four cost spell. Give your minions plus two plus two. Can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. This is probably one of the weaker ones which should tell you something because it's still a very very good card. It's going to uh, immunize your board against low level AoEs. It's going to let you make insane trades. It's going to keep you from getting pinged down and having things just uh, very efficiently removed uh, by mages and and, and uh, priests and whatnot. Great card. Army of the Dead. Remove the top five cards of your deck. Summon any minions removed. This is a six mana card. It's one of the weaker ones too. It's still really good. You're going to get this if you're playing kind of a mid range or like a heavy range deck that doesn't have strongly battle cry oriented minions. You're going to play this and you get a bunch of really, really strong minions for free. It's like Varian Rin's effect on a six mana card. It's fucking crazy. Death and Decay, three mana, deal three damage to all enemies. It's like Consecration, except there's one more damage. It has one less mana. Absolutely insane. Probably my favorite uh, of all of these, except perhaps the weapon that we'll get to in a second. Death and Decay is going to be good no matter what deck you draw it in. Unlike Army of the Dead and Anti-Magic Shell, literally every deck will be happy to see this card. Death Coil, two mana, deal five damage to an enemy or restore five health to a friendly character. You're on May. You're basically never going to want to use the restore five health version, but just dealing five damage to an enemy for two mana is absolutely nuts. It's almost a half price, uh, half price fireball. You're going to just straight up win games with this sometimes. Sometimes you're going to remove minions with this plus Frostbolt. This this Frostbolt is a four mana kill an eight health minion, and there's a lot of eight health minions in the meta right now. Death Coil, super strong. Death Grip, two mana, steal a minion from your opponent's deck and add it to your hand. It's important to note uh, that unlike things like Thought Steal, this does not copy it. This steals it. So if you play this in the late game in a control deck, when you can kind of feel out whether or not they have a win condition, you can start snatching Alex Strazas and Yseras and Antonidases and things like that, taking them out, put them into your hand and denying it to your opponent. With good play, this is a very strong card and at its absolute worst, it's two mana draw a card because all the cards in your opponent's deck are going to be at least decent. They might not match your game plan, but at least they're going to be fundamentally okay for you because they're going to be good cards at a basic level. So so even at its worst, Death Grip is a two mana, preemptively destroy a random creature in their deck. Sometimes that's good, sometimes it's not, and put it in your hand. Pretty solid. Doom Pact, five mana, destroy all minions, remove the top card from your deck for each minion destroyed. This is Twisting Nether with a three mana discount and a relatively unimportant uh, downside for decks that are going to want to play this in certain situations. So if you're a control deck and you get Doom Pact, you're not going to have to kill a whole bajillion bunch of minions. If you're an aggro deck and you get Doom Pact, you are going to be comfortable killing a whole bunch of taunters or like super high value minions to try to set up for that final push at the last moment. This is one of the weaker ones as well, and it's still pretty decent. If you play it as an assassinate that you remove one card from your deck, that's still OK. We've got Obliterate. This is a two mana. Destroy a minion. Your hero takes damage equal to its help. This is, in my opinion, the second best card. Uh, it's above uh, everything. It's kind of on par with Death and Decay. Uh, this is super good. Super, super, super good. Even if you destroy an eight health minion with this, taking eight damage, it's basically the equivalent of playing a poisonous weapon, but it's for two mana and sometimes will cost you way less than the creature's attack. If you trade something into it and then you play this, you can fix 
finish it off. It's very flexible. It can be used as a sort of naturalized equivalent where it's a cheap kill with a major drawback, or it can be used as a frostbolt where you just kill something. It's got one or two health, take one or two damage. Big deal. Your life goes on. Very strong card. Finally, and of course, we've got Frostmourne. Uh, this is technically a neutral weapon, so boot doo doo doo, like that's very important. Now every class can hypothetically play a weapon. Uh, it's a 5-3 weapon for 7 mana that when you're finished using it, you summon every minion you killed with Frostmourne. This is a control deck's dream. You're going to pick off big value taunts. You're going to Frostbolt and then slice in half a Primordial Drake and then later get a free Primordial Drake. That's ridiculous. This card alone, even though it's only going to show up one out of every eight times a Death Knight granting card procs, is insane and it's so fun too uh this one specifically gets my silver design star because it is powerful and thematic and it's intuitive you play it and you say what does this do oh it summons every minion okay so anything i kill i just get radical you're gonna feel good playing it and matches class fantasy it matches the theme of the village king and on top of all of that it's also powerful enough to be played in a real game so this gets my silver star the lich king gets five stars he's the last legendary that's all the neutrals thank you for joining me i'm super hype right now i hope you can tell i hope you're hyped too click down here you can see the druid cards we're gonna move right on along thank you for watching hit the subscribe button and have a lovely night